I'm here today with uh, John Mishka, who is a post commander with the VFW. He has a very interesting case that Ruffin Institute's working on. Uh, but first, I want to talk a bit about the, the larger problem of uh, veterans in, the, in this country. On any given night, there are 200,000 homeless veterans. Uh, a lot of veterans are coming back from the Iraq War and they're having trouble finding jobs. They're having their they're, uh, uh, benefits are being uh, delayed. I have widows that call me. I have uh, Wives of veterans who complain about the Veterans Administration. Uh, they send me emails. Walter Reed Hospital, problems at Walter Reed Hospital. What's up with all that? How do In you the rush to go to war, our country never considers the long view. There's the initial patriotic surge that rah rah, let's go get them, let's prove we're number one, etc. But no consideration at the front end of going to war is given of the back end of what happens to the detritus of war those soldiers who have gone, those men and women who have borne the battle, as Lincoln said. No consideration is given at the front end as to what's going to happen at the back end when these people return, when the war is over. But when they do return, you have bureau the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. Uh, is it my perception or am I wrong? There's just bureaucrats in D.C. that probably either are too busy or don't care what's happening to our veterans? I think the bureaucrats, by and large, is a lot of dead wood in the Veterans Administration. Uh, we have individuals who are not veterans, who are political appointees, political hacks, who do not have the vested interest of the veterans at heart. You know, they're occupying space. They justify their own jobs and their own existence by the amount of paperwork they could generate, the amount of veterans they can turn down or help for that matter. You're a post commander with the VFW. You go out and you try to raise money and try, uh, for, for our veterans. You try to raise awareness of what's going on with people. And one of the things you do is you hand out buddy poppies, uh, which are uh, assembled by disabled veterans. Uh, and any money that people may donate to you uh, or to the VFW, it goes to these people to help them? Yes, what happens is the, the poppies are never sold. They're freely given away. By the acceptance and display of a poppy, you show support and awareness for veterans and veterans' issues. Now, it's become a tradition that when you, for example, someone asks for a poppy, they always give a small contribution. Now, those contributions go directly to the VFW Relief Fund. Now, that many money can only, only be spent on veterans' relief, soldiers relief, soldiers welfare, veterans families, etc. It can't be spent on beer and pretzels in the so hall. It goes directly to the veterans. It goes directly to veterans support. To It buys the socks, the underwear, the t-shirts, the toiletries and things, for example, that we take to the hospitals. So, so you're, in a way, you're kind of supplementing what the government should be doing probably in the first place. Well, you've got to realize that the, the the government is both good and bad. You know, that trough, that federal trough of monies we, we're, we're all trying to dip into, it's actually our own pockets. So it's, it's a finite amount of money. And it, there are demands by all of the federal agencies on that money. And Well, there may be a demand, but uh, you, you have people going over giving their lives, uh, being injured, being shot, coming back with, with the, the... The government doesn't prioritize it, though. Yeah. They don't prioritize it that way. They don't think of the veterans. Well, they think of everybody wants a piece of that they're money. They're willing to give billions of dollars to financial institutions that basically rape the American taxpayer. They don't take care of the veterans. That bothers me. But here, you, you have a personal case that we're working on at the Rutherford Institute. You've been going up to the National Mall in Washington, D.C., handing out the buddy poppies, and you have your, your pail with you where people can voluntarily, you don't ask for money, You've been getting harassed by park employees and some of the volunteers at the park. We've now filed a lawsuit on your behalf, a First Amendment lawsuit, saying you have a right to be out there. Uh, how does it make you feel when you're up there doing something for the veterans, something that I think is a First Amendment right, and obviously you do, uh, and you find your own government is not supporting you but harassing you? I'm insulted. You know, I feel that... What is more appropriate than a veteran at a war memorial or a veteran's memorial? The Vietnam Wall. The Vietnam Wall, for example, I serve as a visual representation of what that wall is about. The, the poppies serve as a reminder, etc. 
the park service says, well, I'm disturbing people's peaceful enjoyment of the park. Well, what about my peaceful enjoyment of the park? What about my free association with anyone who wants to walk up and say, oh, you're a veteran. My, you know, may I have a poppy? Sure, here. What about my right to just stand there? They're saying, well, that I have no right. You work with VFW, you're a post commander, you were a Vietnam vet, you spent time recuperating at the uh, Walter Reed Hospital, you've been through the mill. Uh, so anybody can tell us, maybe uh, across the country, maybe across the world, uh, what can we do better for our vets that we're not doing? And I want to conclude here. Adequate funding of the Veterans Administration. Right now, the Veterans Administration is not man uh, under mandatory funding. It's always as an afterthought. Uh, this year, for the first time, the VA was funded up front. It's always been so much they give, and then they play catch up over the course of the year in funding for VA. They need to sit and think at the front end of a war, what are the back end costs going to be? And when you, when you spool up for war and say we need $6.5 billion for tanks, bullets, and beans, well, we're also going to need $0.5 billion for veteran support when we demobilize, when we bring these guys home. So we filed your first amendment lawsuit, we're heading to court, I hope we can win this thing for you, and uh, I thank you for taking a stand for our vets and being a good example for what we should be doing for our veterans. For people that want to read more about your case, they can go to our website at rutherford.org and re read a commentary I've done and uh, our complaint that we filed in the case and our press release. But um, let's go get them for the vets, and I appreciate all the work you do. Thank you.